<clears throat> All right, today I'm going to be making a Kalita coffee, pour over coffee. It's a pour over coffee. Kalita is just a brand name of the filters that I'm going to be using as well as the holder right here. So if you're not familiar with pour over coffee, it's all of the rage right now. People are using pour over coffee everywhere. You go to a coffee shop, the demand for pour over coffee is there. People want it. And I'm gonna show you how I do it, all right? This is a very meticulous process. Well, I kind of break it down so it's not as meticulous. Uh, I have pretty much the, the lazy version of it, but it makes a really great cup of coffee. Now, the type of coffee that I'm going to be using is uh, Lion Coffee. This is a Hawaiian-based type of coffee right here. This company is based in Hawaii. If you look on the back, it actually shows a uh, map of Hawaii. You see that picture of Hawaii right here? Those are the islands, uh, the major islands. And uh, this particular flavor right here is smooth and nutty vanilla macadamia. All right, very good. It has natural and artificially natural flavors. And for you of, uh, out there who like uh, light coffee, this is a light coffee as opposed to like one of the dark roast. So I'm going to get started with this, with the line coffee, uh, with the filters, but I'm also going to be using uh, this type of filter right here. This is my quick filter, what I like to use on the go. It's a little bit different, but it does a really good trick. There is a mesh right here that protects the coffee from seeping through. You get a fine mesh that goes through, but uh, some people don't always drink all of the coffee to the bottom to get that grit. So we're going to go over that, but first we're going to go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to go ahead and heat up my water right here. All right, and to heat it up, I actually use, when I'm making a pour of coffee, I use uh, purified water or spring water. I rarely use tap water. And uh, if you're a coffee connoisseur, you can pretty much tell the difference. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of water in here. This is Hawaiian Mountain Fresh Purified Water. It's not spring water, but it is purified. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. I like to pour it up all the way. Uh, because I don't want my coffee to be overheated. Now, if you know uh, a coffee connoisseur, over hot coffee really kills the flavor and you don't want it to do it. And so I'm adding more of water in here so it takes a little bit longer to heat uh, and it also will stay uh, warmer longer at the temperature I desire. And so I'm going to heat this up. Right here, I'm going to heat this up on an Iwatani. This is a Japanese brand uh, burner right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. It's Iwatani grill. If you're unfamiliar with Iwatani grills, they're the really great, reliable uh, <clears throat> type of burners. And they come with, uh, you can get these Iwatani actually, uh, butane fuel. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here. And put that into place and close it and we're gonna get started with some pour over coffee all right so I'm gonna put that in here and put my coffee on top and while this is heating up I'm actually going to all right so it's burning right there uh, while that's heating up I'm actually gonna prepare my first cup of pour over coffee all right, so like I said, we're going to be using smooth and nutty vanilla macadamia. All right, naturally and artificially flavored coffee. Really good stuff right here. So, all right, so with this, you have your craft right here. You have the Kalita filters. And what I'm going to do, sometimes people like to take two filters out. They like it ultra filtered. I, however, I'm, I'm fine with putting one filter in here. All right, so I'm going to place one filter in here. Now, the directions for Lion Coffee is use two tablespoons or two teaspoons of coffee. I use well-rounded teaspoons because I like a little bit more caffeine than most people do. And put it in here. So I have smooth and nutty vanilla macadamia. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Lion Coffee, Hawaiian Coffee. Do you see that right there? Those are the islands, the Hawaiian Islands. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you know what it is. That's... Big Island, Maui, Malakoi, Oahu, and Kauai. And there's another couple of them in there that I didn't mention, but it's all good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour a couple of, is it tablespoons or teaspoons? Oh, it's actually tablespoons. So I'm going to make 
these two teaspoons a little bit larger than what I normally would. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do a third right here and put this in here. All right, maybe a little bit more. I want a little bit of caffeine. All right, so I'm going to fill this up. I want to get a full of this. So I'm going to put another one. So I'm going to be making several cups because I'm going to make different types of coffee when it comes to this. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up. And it sounds like the water is boiling back there. All right, so I have that in there. All right, so uh, while this going, is going on, I'm also going to fill up my Yosai. Yo, Yosai, Yosai, I don't know what this is, but this is a great filter right here. I use this filter for actually making coffee as well as tea. This works well as tea. And if you're a coffee drinker and you like to switch back and forth the co from coffee to tea, this actually washes really well. One of the main concerns with using the same coffee uh, cup or, I don't know, filter as you do with tea is the flavor crisscrossing back and forth. Now, I can tell you this brand right here, the Yossi, actually cleans so well that I, with very sensitive taste buds, can't taste the crossover from coffee and tea. So this is Yosai. I'm going to make this right here. Uh, right here, looks like the water is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off off the Iwatani grill uh, burner. I'm going to let it cool for a little bit, like I was saying earlier. Now, when you're making coffee, you don't want the water temperature to be too hot, boiling hot, because it really takes away from the flavors that the coffee can actually bring out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it off over in here. All right, so I have my kettle. You can check out my kettle that's in there. I have a, a, a link to that inside of the description at the bottom right there. And so when I'm pouring the uh, the water over it, now with uh, pour over coffee, it's, it's, a, it's a trick. I'm not the perfect at it. I'm not the best at it. I've seen it done a million times, and yet I'm not fully uh, professional at it yet. So you, you pour it in a little bit, like this, a little circular action right here, and you actually let it swell, or what they call balloon, all right? I don't know what exactly this does, but it's supposed to make the coffee a little bit better. All right, so it balloons, and it goes down, and when it goes down, you pour start in the middle, and then you work your way out, and you go in a circular motion again, and you bring it all the way up, depending on how much coffee you want, and then you let it drip down. Now, the beauty with this is it it kind of blanches the coffee grounds right here, and then it goes down. I'm going to get a little bit lower so you can see it. It's dripping down in there, and a lot of people are asking, what's the difference between this and a regular coffee maker? And I can tell you, coffee temperature water, if you have a coffee maker, coffee maker, the temperature is really hot, and then it sits on the burner underneath, and it continues to cook the coffee and gives you that bitter taste that some people don't mind because you put so much sugar and creamer and whatever not inside of your coffee but for those who drink the coffee plain black like this you want to you don't want all those burnt taste in there that's why i use uh, bottled water which reminds me to take a little drink of this really quick <clears throat> all right so it's filled up a little bit i can actually get a little bit more in there and because i put so much coffee in there <clears throat> i'm actually gonna pour a little bit more in here so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this up like this and all of you coffee connoisseurs who are professionals at pour over coffee you're probably like thinking that I just send right here for doing this but one thing to note when you're doing your third pour over your third pour over for some reason it drips down really slow and I think it's the sediment has clogged all the pores in the coffee filter and it goes down slowly. So here it is right here. It's about done. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the top right here. I like to let my coffee cool just slightly. Some people like it piping hot, but I, I like it cooled just a little bit. All right, so it's going off right here. It's, let's see, it's about done right here. So this is what it looks like on the inside right here. So that's the end of it right here, and it's still dripping off a little bit, and you have perfect personal pot of coffee right here and I'm gonna try this out and you pour it into your cup and you can do it multiple different ways multiple ways multiple different that's kind of redundant right so you can do it different ways I make iced coffee I make chocolate coffee I make 
sweetened coffee, and I'll go over that as well. All right, so right here, I'm just going to pour it in my cup really quick so you can see the coloration of it. It's a really good smelling coffee. I'm spilling coffee all over the place. That's not really cool. All right, so you see that's the coloration of it right here. It's It really brings out the best of the coffee when you do a pour-over coffee as opposed to scorching your coffee in a, in a coffee maker or just making your coffee on the go. So this is what the coffee is. I'm going to go ahead and taste this, and then I'm going to make some iced coffee with this really quick. I'm getting a little close so you can see this. Very smooth. That is the word that I'm looking for. So when you do pour over coffee, the coffee comes out smoother than you otherwise would by getting at some restaurant or so. Because you take the time to actually bring out the flavors of the coffee. The Lion Coffee, for those of you who are just joining in or just coming on after the fact of the live video, this is Lion Vanilla Macadamia Smooth and Nutty Coffee. It's a Hawaiian brand coffee, which is really good. Very famous brand out here in the Hawaiian Islands. All right taste that a little bit it's really good so i'm gonna go ahead and make some iced coffee using this right here now i can tell you this is a really smooth coffee when you do a pour over coffee and when you make a uh, an ice a cold brew or even a creamy cold brew it's even better than what you would normally think all right so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i'm gonna go ahead and and this is how i make my cold brew okay so i have this right here and this is just a, a glass a normal glass right here I wouldn't even call it a cold brew because I didn't brew it coldly. I, I call it an iced coffee, all right? So this is how I make my iced coffee if I want it sweet. I can add either sugar right here. You can add sugar. Or some people who don't like adding sugar and would rather go with honey, they add honey to the bottom. And I can make them both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a teaspoon of sugar to this, all right? So I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar, all right? And... Put that in there. And some people like the dramatic effect of pouring the milk on last. And, you know, for giggles, I guess I'll do that too. All right. So, but the, the trick with putting the sugar in first, you want to add some of the hot coffee to it. And I'll tell you why. Because it dissolves the sugar faster. So you're not left with little grits of sugar in your coffee. So you see what I'm doing right here? I mixed it in with the hot coffee really quick. And then next, I'm going to add some ice to the top of it. All right, so I'm going to add some ice. And so it's sweetened coffee at the bottom. And then I'm going to add the ice to the top just a little bit. And then, as you know, I'm just going to pour the coffee over. Maybe I should pour a little bit more ice because the coffee is actually going to melt it very fast. And I want to be left with some cold coffee and not lukewarm coffee or hot iced coffee what that doesn't even make sense but i'm going to go ahead and pour this over right here so i'm going to pour it on the ice just like this pour it on the ice like this and it's going to chill if you if you pour it slowly it's actually going to get colder faster so i'm going to pour this over all right and the people like to go for that dramatic effect where you see the cream or milk dripping down in here. So I'm going to go for that dramatic effect for the giggles. All right. So I'm going to use whole milk. Some people prefer to use cream. I've actually, yeah, I actually have cream. Cream will actually give it a more dramatic effect. You know what? I'm just going to reach back to the refrigerator and I'm actually going to find some cream. And this is kind of a sin. You don't see many people putting heavy whipping cream inside of their coffee. Now, this is going to be, this has a lot of fat in there. So if you don't care about getting fat, having a lot of fat in your coffee, go for this. But it gives it a really nice dramatic effect. And if you've ever had 100% heavy whipping cream inside of your coffee instead of half and half or milk, you'll know, you'll taste the difference, you'll be quite amazed. So I mixed the sugar in here. So let me go ahead and spin it again a little bit. So if you want to drink your coffee just like this, I'm telling you, it's probably one of the best, smoothest coffees that you'll ever make yourself at home. You'd probably have to go to a gourmet coffee shop and make sure they're not too busy and they can actually do your pour over like this. And I think some Starbucks actually do pour over coffee upon request. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this on here. 
So if you look at the dramatic effect. I guess I guess it's dramatic. I don't know. But either way, it'll drip on down and give that little dramatic effect. I'm bringing it closer here. That's what people are going for. So that's a really smooth cup of coffee. I'm going to go ahead and stir it up because I'm past the drama, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and stir it up. Look at that drama. All right, gone. No more drama. A nice, smooth, creamy cup of coffee. That is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. Maybe I'll have a sip of it. It's probably really good because I use cream and it's really smooth. All right, and so there's still some coffee left in there. I haven't decided what I'll do with that. Maybe I'll mix it with honey and do a honey drink with that. Oh, that's really good coffee. Very smooth. You will be very surprised if you have a pour of a cup of coffee and you use that. So next, I'm going to go ahead and use some honey to make this. In the same process, if you're going to be making a coffee, a sweetened coffee, iced coffee, uh, go ahead and put the honey in first. Trust me, you don't want to put the honey in after you've put in the cold uh, after you put the ice in because the honey is will actually freeze up and you'll be stuck with clunks of honey at the bottom not a good feeling I guess yeah well it's all right I guess so I have this in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of the hot coffee in here and if you don't mind you can actually pour a little bit of the hot water if that coffee is not enough so take that and go ahead and stir it in right here. Get, get the honey nice and dissolved in there. So once you get the honey nice and dissolved in there with the coffee, it's going to be really sweet. Some people can actually drink that, but that's way too sweet for me. Go ahead and add some ice cubes. Add some ice cubes to it. Now remember, if you have really hot coffee, pour a lot of ice cubes in there because you want your iced coffee to be actually iced coffee. You don't want your iced coffee to be hot iced coffee, if that makes any sense. Doesn't really, but okay. So have that fully poured. So this is honey in here. So I have honey, coffee, pour over coffee, the smoothest type of coffee you probably can get, pour over coffee. Even if you have not a great batch of coffee, Pour over coffee can actually make it so much better than what it normally is. If Even if you get the bottom shelf coffee, it can make it so much better. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same process again. I like to try to clean up a little bit. So I have these wipes right here. I've got some Clorox wipes that I use to clean up the area. All right, it's Clorox wipes. And I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this up really quick. All right, get all the mess away. And... Now I'm going to go ahead and pour in the coffee. Now if you have that smell of Clorox wipes in your hand, you probably want to wipe it off because you don't want to be smelling Clorox wipes while you are drinking your coffee. Not a good combination, but I'm doing it for the sake of the video. I want to be clean. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. Now for you who are just joining in, so that's honey coffee at the bottom, sweetened concentrated honey coffee at the bottom. And I'm just going to pour the rest of the coffee on here. All right, so pour the rest of the coffee on here, just like that. So that's the pour over coffee. And then I'm just going to pour, I'm actually going to do milk for this one right here. I'm not going to do heavy whipping cream for you, those of you just joining on. I just used heavy whipping cream to pour over this. So I'm going to do a little bit of milk right here. And look, there goes that dramatic effect that everyone loves. They love to see that milk. Combined with the coffee initially, looks pretty cool, right? So I'm going to go ahead and stir this up, and I'm going to have a sip of this as well. I'm going to stir that up and try this. Let me see if I like the honey. The honey is a good brand of honey. It's all natural. It's actually Hawaiian honey. Really good stuff. Leave that back there for you guys want to see this. So this right here, I have sugar iced coffee. I have sugar in there. You see the heavy whipping cream? It coagulates a little bit at the top. Might want to stir that up. I don't know why I did that. It looks kind of funny. But the milk version actually looks good. So I have the uh, heavy whipping cream iced coffee right here with sugar. And then I have the honey iced coffee with whole milk. I'm going to go ahead and try this and see how which one tastes better. Well, I really like the honey. The honey is really good. It goes well with the smooth pour over coffee. Let me try this right here. This is funny looking cream. Okay. This right here, 
I'm not going to say it's like ice cream, but it's satisfying like ice cream using the heavy whipping cream because there's so much fat in there that it makes it very tasty. So there's another way you can make the coffee. I don't mean to yell at your ears, but I like adding, look at that, Hershey cocoa sometime. I don't know what you call that. I'm sure there's a name for that, adding cocoa to your coffee. There's some funny or unique name. I don't know, mocha chocolate. I'm not sure. I think I just pulled that out of my uh, coffee. All right. So uh, I like adding cocoa to it. Just a hint of cocoa to my coffee sometime. And it really makes it good. You might want to try that out sometime. It gives you that boost of chocolate to go along with your morning brew. Really good. All right. So we have the cold brews. And I'm going to set this to the side. And I'm going to actually use this coffee maker right here. All right, you can also check it down there. It's called the Yo Yossi. So if you want to make your coffee, you have coffee grounds, but you don't have any filters left, this is a great tool to have. You can take this with you wherever and always ensure that you have some really fresh, great coffee as long as you can pour it over. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. All right, I'm going to turn the water back on. I want to get this water hot again. I'm going to pour in some of more of the no I think there's enough maybe I'll pour a little bit in there so I'll pour a little bit of water in there and I'm just going to heat this up and I'm going to this is an also a pour over uh, this is a little bit different from the Kalita all right so it's a little bit different from the Kalita because the Kalita actually has a fine filter with this as a paper filter this is a fine mesh but it is nowhere as fine as the Kalita and to use these these are fairly simple all you need is a cup right so you find a cup and then regular coffee cup and you just go ahead and sit this on top just like that it sits on top and then you find your coffee however strong you want to make your coffee i usually use two teaspoons of coffee or tablespoons i can't really tell the difference sometimes with the tablespoons and teaspoons so you use i use two teaspoons or tablespoons of coffee and put it in here now the coffee that i'm using is lion coffee all right this is a hawaiian brand coffee it's smooth and nutty vanilla macadamia naturally flavored naturally and artificially flavored it's a really great coffee right here it's a hawaiian brand so i'm going to take this last scoop of it i use well-rounded scoops i mean they're so rounded they might as well be two scoops each but that's how i like to make my coffee so I have this in here, the coffee's in here, and you can take a look at it. So this is how the coffee's sitting inside the Yos Yoasi. I can't even pronounce it right. It sits in there, and it doesn't go through. Look, some of the grinds go through, but uh, it's negligible, right? So I'm going to go ahead and sit this on top. And the coffee is boiling. I'm just going to let it cool slightly because I want it to be just under boiling. I don't want it to be scorching hot because like i said earlier when the coffee is scorching hot it usually burns the coffee and brings out bitter taste and you lose all the smoothness that you possibly possibly can gain all right and sometimes if the coffee uh, you know ready to make a coffee and it's too hot what i'll end up doing is i'll end up taking the coffee and perhaps seeing how hot it is i can actually gauge it i could get a thermometer but I'm not going to do that. And then just put some ice cubes in there and just let it cool so it gets slightly under boiling. All right, so I have that. And now I'm going to go ahead and pour this over. I want to get down in there so you can actually see what I'm talking about. All right, see how this balloons? It balloons a little bit different, but it indeed balloons. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to go ahead and pour the water over here, just under boiling, remember? And I do this circular motion as well. Now, this is kind of different because you, you're not actually getting the real ballooning method. You kind of have to submerge the coffee grounds into water, just like that. Uh, so it's not as smooth as the Kalita pour over coffee, but it is a great alternative. So you let it sit in here. And sometimes I forget about it. You know, maybe I'll go put on my shoes or something in the morning and let this sit and... Well, typically, you don't want to let it sit too long because it kind of defeats the purpose of this. With tea, you can let it sit for a while. But like when it comes to coffee, um, I'd rather not uh, let it sit because it brings out flavors that I don't necessarily enjoy. Um, so it defeats the purpose of pour over coffee. So, so once you have this in here, just simply 
go like this and it drains just like that it drains just like that really quick and you just discard of this in the trash and put in the dishwasher and you have your cup of coffee right here all right so this is a pour of coffee with the yaisi all right just like that now look at that smells great the notes of vanilla macadamia smooth and nutty lion coffee from the hawaiian islands smells so good i hope this was helpful hope you like pour over coffee now that i, I talked about it and perhaps maybe you'll get a pour over coffee maker for yourself Thanks for watching. I think I'm going to come back with some health drinks a little bit later, or I'm actually going to do a review of a blender. All right, so coming up soon. All right, thanks a lot. Hope you guys have a great evening, day, whatever time it is where you are, and happy Prime Day, I guess. Thanks a lot for watching.